So, what does all this say about the capabilities of Germany's security services when somebody suspected of preparing an attack like this slips through the cracks? Let's speak now to David Otter, who's a counter-terrorism expert and joins us now live in the studio here. David, welcome to the programme. Thank you. So, so Anis Amri had been under surveillance, as we've just been hearing, for some time, uh, and yet he slipped through the cracks. This is a fundamental failure of German intelligence. So, how much confidence should one have in their capabilities? I mean, that's a very difficult thing for the um, German government to experience at the moment, um, especially the fact that, you know, we've still not been able to um, actually track, you know, the suspect. Um, yes, you know, it's um, very difficult for the German government because um, the, there are so many thousands of people that, you know, the German government has on their terrorist watch list. And, you know, it's almost very difficult and impossible for them to keep a track on each and every one of them, and especially the fact that we're dealing with human beings here. So I think the most important thing is not actually looking at the, you know, where the German government missed it, but I think, you know, the, 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 the fact that, you know, the individual who committed this offence after 72 hours has still not been found, that actually is one of the biggest issues that I think, you know, the German government should be worried about. Right, and then investigators are, are hindered because of the lack of CCTV footage. Oh, for of one, course, you know, in the United Kingdom, you know, that will not happen, especially at the heart of Berlin, where you should expect maximum security and CCTV coverage. You know, for 72 hours, he's not been found. I mean, that is a very, very uh, huge issue. I mean, of course, the German culture of, of CCTV is very different, you know, and I think what the German government has to do now, you know, looking back, is to see how they can implement a, strat a, a, a kind of a panoptic strategy where, you know, the CCTV becomes an important element in their counterterrorism strategy. That is what we have in the United Kingdom. But this is not to say that, you know, individuals cannot uh, um, actually, you know, uh, slip through the net. Because if you look at the peculiarities of this attack, this is described as a smash and grab attack. You know, what they've done is they've smashed, they've the lawyer, grabbed a lorry and then used it to um, uh, smash into the crowd. So I think it's, it's almost impossible for the German government to have prevented this type of attack. Okay, and as you say, the, the guy's still on the run. And, and given the lack of CCTV, CCTV footage, yes. which would be the first, uh, the first portal call, what approach do you think the investigators are taking? Well, what can they do to try and track him down? I mean, the most important thing is, you know, for them to understand the, you know, his, his individual background, which I'm sure they do, understand, you know, his, his family relations, you know, because these individuals who run away from this, uh, from from the crime scene, you know, rely on their communities, you know, for the, you know, for them to hide. So I think what the government has to do, you know, which is I think it should have been done before, is a proactive effort. You know, to have a community um, a resilient strategy whereby people, the security services can liaise with the communities and know who is living within the communities. You cannot hide, you know, if you don't have, you know, the support of the community. So I think where this um, uh, suspect is hiding, you know, he's been assisted by the community, which, of course, you know, um, has to come up with, with, um, uh, with some answers. But of course, there's nothing to say he's still in Germany. I mean, there's freedom of movement across Europe. He, he could have left the country. Of course, the freedom of movement is, is, is one of those issues. But a terrorist is dangerous anywhere in the world, you know, whether it's in Germany or it's in, in, in Italy or France, you know, he's a terrorist, you know. So what we should be looking at is collaboration and sharing of information between different countries. And I think that is not happening in practice. So I think the world needs to go back on the drawing board, you know, share information practically, see how they can address some of these issues and, you know, in order for them to be secured. Because right now we're facing uh, a faceless organisation that attacks, you know, innocent people at whatever time when the people less expect. Good to get your take on this. Uh, David Otto, thanks very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you.